Okay, hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining in for our event today. May I invite everyone first to give virtual applause here? Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, my name is Novalia Nurfitriani. I'm the MC and the moderator during this event. It's such an honor <clears throat> and pleasure to be here with all of you today. And I hope everyone is doing great. We have reached at Orange Talk 8, special edition to celebrate first anniversary Empower Youth for Food campaign titled Towards a Sustainable Food System, role of youth in strengthening linkages between rural urban agriculture in Southeast Asia. Now, talking about today's event, we have a very exciting lineup of panelists who will share their insight and perspectives. And in addition, there will be announcements for winners of the video competition of Empower Youth for Food. The Empower Youth for Food campaign was launched on April 22nd, 2021. So today we also celebrate the first anniversary of the campaign. And this campaign initially ran for two years from April 2021 to April 2023 and engage youth, knowledge institutions, government, private sectors and CSOs to address issue and create opportunities in the field of agriculture. The objectives of the campaign are to improve the reputation of agriculture education and agricultural employment among young people in Southeast Asia. Second, to engage and further mobilize a large cross-section of the Netherlands alumni network in Southeast Asia. And the third one, to inspire the young generation in Southeast Asian countries to become more involved and shape a future for food production based on principle of sustainability. There are four blocks of campaign. The first one is career opportunities, change maker challenge, success stories, and events such as our talk show today. This event is supported by Ministry of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality of the Netherlands, Nufik Neso, <clears throat> Wageningen University and Research, NFP, The HES, ICCO, Agritera, ISOACID, and IRS. We thank all of our sponsors for your support. Okay, now to begin our event today, I would like to invite Mr. Peter Van Tyl to deliver welcoming remarks. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Peter van Tuyl. I'm the director for Nefik Neso Indonesia, based here in Jakarta. I am so happy this afternoon to talk to you at the beginning of the 8th OKP Orange Alumni Talks, which is focused on celebrating one year of our Empower Youth for Food campaign. We started this campaign because we see different countries in Southeast Asia facing similar problems in enthusiasmizing young people to become involved in the agricultural sector, to go to a school to learn about agriculture, to learn how to grow food in sustainable and efficient ways, in modern ways. And the Netherlands, as the second largest agricultural exporter in the world, has a lot of knowledge, has a lot of tips and has a lot of insights to share to encourage the young generation in the region to become involved. It is crucially important because food production is important, sustainable food production. That is of course how we want to grow food in today's world. Um, Southeast Asia is lucky in the sense that it is quite fertile. There's lots of opportunities to develop food production and business in this field, but the young generation, of course, needs to become interested and engaged. So very happy to see several examples of that this afternoon, the winners of our Changemaker Challenge, young people coming up with ideas how to improve food production, and you will hear from their coaches, you will hear from other examples and from alumni, from people from the region who have studied in the Netherlands in this field. So lots of interesting information and further encouraged, uh, encouragement for young people to become involved in sustainable food production in Southeast Asia. Wishing you a very fruitful meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your remarks, Mr. Peter. Uh, and moving on to opening remarks will be delivered by Mr. Yos Van Hoom. Please, Mr. Yos. Okay, thank you, Novalia. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, first of all, greetings to Peter van Tel, Director Nefik Nezo, as you already uh, heard his welcome remarks, but also distinguished panelists from Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. Uh, distinguished participants, practitioners, researchers, and companies, and friends, of course, from civil society organizations, students, and the youth from Southeast Asia. Selamat siang. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here at this uh, Orange Talk special edition as agricultural counselor, not only for Indonesia, but also for uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, um, and especially for this one, where it is about uh, sustainable food systems, but not only for this special edition, but also to celebrate the first anniversary of Empower Youth for Food campaign. So, Bapa Sukarno, the first president of Indonesia, once said, and I hope I pronounce it correctly, Beri saya sepuluh anak muda, maka akan saya ubah dunia. In English, for me, it's easier. Give me 10 young people and then I will transform the world. And I think this statement is so strong and convincing, it shows that the, val the value of youth. And therefore, I would like to extend a special welcome to all the youths here from Southeast Asia who feel engaged and inspired to improve the agriculture sector and moving towards sustainable food systems. Because I don't think I have to tell you that COVID-19, but also climate change, reveals the vulnerability of our food systems more than ever. And that we have to do it in a different way and have to change or redesign our food systems. Climate change decreases food production, disrupts food availability, reduces access to food and affects food quality. The agricultural sector and especially farmers are very vulnerable to climate change because it affects the cropping patterns, planting periods, production and quality of yields. And on the, on the other hand, agriculture also emits greenhouse gases and therefore contributes to climate change. And also the COVID-19 exposed the vulner vulnerability of our food systems in a different way. The measures to control the virus outbreaks have been disrupting global food supply change. Border restrictions and lockdowns have had significant impacts on livelihoods and hindered food transport. Food losses and waste increased as farmers lacked a sales market and were forced to throw away their products. And people in urban areas struggled to access fresh, good quality and nutritious food. So in that sense, it shows that we have to do it differently and have to change our food systems. Agricultural systems worldwide must become more productive and less wasteful. Sustainable agricultural practices and food systems, which include both production and consumption, must be lo looked at from a holistic and integrated point of view. We need a different strategy for farming. One that increases productivity and resilience to the impacts of climate change while lowering emissions wherever feasible. This so-called climate change, uh, climate smart agriculture addresses the reduction of the environmental and climate impact of agricultural activity. And on the other hand, the development of food production methods and crops that are well adapted to changing weather condition, conditions. It was already mentioned by, by Peter van Tel. The Netherlands is the second largest producer and exporter of agricultural products in the world. Supported by its extensive world-class knowledge sector. The Netherlands is an important investor as well in the agricultural sector in Southeast Asia. The Dutch agricultural system is regarded for its outstanding efficiency. Our system is based on individual supply chains dedicated to producing as much food as possible at minimal environmental cost. 
almost two decades ago, we made a national commitment to sustainable agriculture with the slogan, twice as much food using half as many resources. And this is easy to say, but difficult to realize. So we learned that this is something we have to do it together. And not only the food producers, our farmers, and in the Netherlands, we call this a triple helix method. Government, private sector, knowledge institutes, all work together. And through this Empower Youth for Food campaign, it is great to see the number of Netherlands related actors, including youth, joining forces in this campaign to contribute to the sustainable food system and nutritious security in Southeast Asia. This is exactly what we need to accomplish. In this regard, allow me to recall the message from the former Minister of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality of the Netherlands, Carola Schouten, during the opening of this campaign. She said that designing and developing a sustainable food system requires collaboration, and this includes the involvement of the young generation as well. Engagement of the youth is essential for transitioning towards sustainable agriculture and food systems, spe specifically in the strengthening the rural urban link linkages. The young generation of today has opportunities to be creative and innovative, which further makes agriculture and farming more appealing. Let's use this moment for us to think and rethink how we all together will continue to grow, share and consume our food sustainably. Finally, I hope to see more young people come together to build a greener food system. And I'm sure we can do this. And I would like you to be confident that we can all make a difference for the sake of the planet on which we live and for the lives of the future generation. I wish you an inspiring session today. Prima Kasi. Terima kasih. Thank you very much for your remarks, uh, Mr. Rios. And you also show the strength of the youth and the importance of sustainable agricultural sectors. So participants, please join me to give applause to Mr. Peter and Mr. Rios. All right. <clears throat> okay, just before we start uh, to the panel discussion, we have a quick fun survey using Mentimeter. So everyone, please go to www.menti.com or just click the link that we have shared in the chat box, right? And please insert the code. Um, the code is 65003307, all right? Yes, you can start to join the Mentimeter. Okay, so there will be uh, only two questions. Um, the first one is, what do you think the, stere the stereotype of the agriculture or food sector? That's the first one. So let me see the answers. Wow. Okay. Back a moment. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can see some of you have joined us and submitted uh, the answers here. And for some of you who have, who have not joined in, please do go to the link provided in the chat box. So there are some answers. Okay, what do you think the stereotype of agriculture or food sectors? Risky, expensive, sustainable, old fashioned. Mm, but this, this is so interesting that agricultural sector is expensive. Maybe we can elaborate more with the panelists, okay? Um, but there is also cheap. Okay, all people, no food, no life. I, I completely agree. Zero hunger, dirty. Okay, because uh, it's old fashioned, right? It's related to the old fashioned one. And then, uh, okay, traditional farmers. Okay, I think consumers, rice paddy. Okay, so, okay, so agriculture is Imagine as a rice paddy field. Okay, important, I agree. Unfamiliar, <clears throat> marginal, hunger, unaccessible. Okay, 
Okay, I think uh, that's enough for the first questions. Okay, we can move to to second one. How can youth contribute to the agriculture or food sector? Okay, what do you think, guys, um, about these questions? You can type every answer that crosses into your mind or based on your experience, maybe, or uh, perhaps you have uh, read or heard about it somewhere. You can just type and submit your answers. Let me see, some of you have submitted the answers. Mm -hmm. How can you contribute to the agriculture sector? Become farmer. Okay. Okay, so this is in the upstream level, right? Become a farmer. Engage in farming. Okay, urban gardening. This is also very important for the urban people. Okay, support local farmers. Partner up with farmers. and Oh, innovation. I also agree with these answers. We have to innovate, right? And then um, bring in new technologies. Okay, it's innovation, technology, uh, responsible technology, I mean. Okay, um, what else? Eat properly. There is a, a concept of mindful eating. I also agree with this. Um, what else? Manage the distribution, okay, because it's a long chain of distribution. Inspire youth. Okay. Oh, I think uh, that's all for the answer. We have wide variety of answers we have here. Okay. I think for the uh, Mentimeter is enough. Okay. Okay, a moment. Okay, thank you uh, for participants. Thank you so much for participating in this uh, survey. So now uh, let's enter our panel discussion. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to discuss with three great panelists here. We are about to have a talk show with the panelists titled Towards a Sustainable Food System, Role of Youth in Strengthening Linkages Between Rural Urban Agriculture in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia has witnessed an increasing environmental degradation and rapid urbanization, land use changes, deforestation, biodiversity loss, and unsustainable agricultural practices in rural areas has driven the sustainability of food production, rural livelihood, and it drives migration. It is reflected in the state of food security and nutrition um, report that uh, 2021 that the children who are living in the rural areas are 1.7 times more prevalent of stunting compared to people in urban areas. While in urban areas, precarity is intense. Cities are increasingly expanded through rapid urbanization. People who are living in urban areas, particularly with lower income condition, are more prevalent of overweight and obesity due to poorer diets and less diverse food sources. Furthermore, the rural population who are migrating to the city are mostly in productive age, leave behind the agricultural works, inducing an aging population in the sector. As a result, there are more people to feed and less people are involved in producing food. Addressing the complexity requires systemic thinking and transformational changes in the food system. In the Southeast Asia, countries such as Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam have encouraged food system transformation through research, dialogue, and collaborative actions. Nevertheless, rural urban linkages in the ongoing process of the transformational agenda remains under underexplored. So therefore, this talk show will try to explore more about it. And uh, we will also conduct a Q&A. So if you have any questions during the talk show, please type them into the Q&A box and we will address them uh, during the Q&A session. Okay, time for me to introduce the panelists. Um, the first one, there is Dr. Long Hong from Vietnam. He is a PhD alumnus from Wageningen University and research 
and he is also a founder and operation manager at New Amsterdam Consult. Hello, uh, Dr. Long. Good morning, good afternoon. Hi, Novalia. Hi. It's, uh, my greetings to everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will get back to you later, uh, Dr. Long. And the, uh, for the second one, uh, there is uh, Aninda Tiffany Puari from Indonesia. She is the uh, OKP, OKP Individual Scholarship Award D 2020 and uh, alumna of Wageningen University and Research. And also uh, right now she is a lab of Universitas Andalas. Hello, uh, Aninda. Hello, Ms. Nafalia. Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to the talk. Looking forward to having a fruitful discussion later. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, there is uh, Brian Amihan Bornes from the Philippine Head of the Department of Food Science and Technology of Sorten uh, Leite State University, the Philippines. Hello, Brian. Hello, Nafalia, and to everyone present, my cordial greetings. Okay, thank you all. I hope you are doing great. Okay, um, so without further ado, let's start the discussion. Uh, as also mentioned by Aninda, we have we hope uh, we have a fruitful discussion today. Um, okay, actually, we have some questions regarding the topics, but I'm going to start the questions. Uh, the question with, um. Okay, like we understand that there are a lot of uh, challenges and let alone the complexity of sustainable agriculture and food sectors. One of them, let's say, is a rural urban linkages issue. So why is it important to improve, uh, to improve uh, issues on rural urban linkages to build a sustainable food system? Um, may I start from uh, Long? Yes, thank you very much, Nofalia, for starting up with a very interesting question. Um, again, my uh, my warm greetings to everybody. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are. About the, if I understand correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong. The question was about the importance of you know highlighting the linkages between rural and urban areas within the picture of food production. Um, I very much agree with two points one is made by Nufalia is that you know this is a, a linkage that we have to highlight even further and I would like to refer also back to a very good point that Mr. Ost also mentioned that we need to uh, systematically change the way food is produced in large parts of the world including our parts of the world in Southeast Asia and looking at the urban and rural connection is one of the game-changing let's say uh, uh, strategy it's a very important lead but at the moment, not much attention is, is there. Why we have to do so? I think a couple of points. First of all, as we say, the cities host the most of the population, uh, talking about Jakarta, Vietnam, Saigon, uh, also cities of the Philippines, uh, tens of millions of people are living there. However, our food is most of the time not there. It is uh, somewhere uh, in, you know, in the peri-urban areas or in the urban areas. So, um, the connection in terms of food is, of course, something very logical and, and important to see that, you know, millions of people in the cities are dependent upon the food that are produced elsewhere and most of the time in the rural areas. So the connection um, is very important and I would like to mention the importance mostly of the supply chain. How do we close the chain? How do we make local food system that is more efficient? Um, just to bring the urban areas to uh, the rurals uh, closer to each other in terms of the supply chain, in terms of the quality control, in terms of the uh, abundance of food that we can supply to cities. Um, second point is, and that is connecting to the role of youth. Um, you know, a lot of new knowledge, inspirations, technologies are there to be leveraged for sustainable food production um, are from the urban areas, mostly from the knowledge center like university institutes and tech companies um, like us. Um, and so I think if we can connect that with the youth movement to bring that to the urban area, uh, from the urban areas to the rural areas, uh, that would be a very exciting uh, move 
to see how you know all these new innovations, technology that we are talking about can really make a change in the rural food system. Um, I think those are the two points that I highlight uh, in terms of the importance of this, um, this linkage. I would stop there. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Long, for, for your answers. That's very interesting. And uh, you also mentioned about the role of youth, but maybe we, we will explore it uh, a lot uh, after these questions. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And um, I would like to invite uh, Aninda. Would you like to add any more insights on these questions? Well, thank you, Ms. Nafalia. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone, for uh, people in around Southeast Asia, I believe. And good morning, Mr. Long. <laughs> it's nice to see you uh, virtually. Hope to see to meet you in a person in uh, sometime next uh, soon. So, um, so the question was about uh, how uh, important it is uh, the linkage between urban and rural. Uh, regarding to agricultural and sustainable food system, I believe. Um, so um, I do agree with uh, the previously mentioned by Dr. Long, but I want to add some issue regarding to my background as an environmental technologist uh, in the agricultural sector. So recently when we hear about sustainable food system, indeed, we agree that it is a complex issue. And uh, when we talk about sustainable food system, we talk about not uh, we talk not only about sustainable agriculture, but also we look many other different things. Eventually, in terms of agriculture activity itself, surely we also look from the environmental aspect. So I would like to highlight one of the uh, tagline from Yas uh, in the previous uh, opening speech about. A uh, smart agricultural system, I believe. So, um, in my perspective as an environmental technologist in agricultural sector, um, we believe that farming activity has provided good thing that improve our well-being, urban civilizations. However, um, and yet the activity itself also causes the environmental degradations and depletion of natural resources in rural area. So, when the environmental in rural area damaged by the food production for uh, urban demand. So it will cause the unsustainable food system. So um, because uh, I currently we still, I think uh, we still have limitations uh, about uh, uh, how we, we are still focusing on maintaining downstream food systems such as how and how much uh, we produce food, how's the food being processed and consumed for uh, people in our urban area. However, however, we forget to maintain the upstream, upstream food production, particularly farming in rural area itself. Um, I would say that it's still, it, still, it is still rare circumstances whether we think about uh, how we bring back the crop we harvest or take into consideration the nutrient run off during the farming activity or uh, the water resource consumption during the uh, farming activity that can damage aquatic ecological system in rural area. And even not to mention the food solid waste that goes into environment that can also damage the, uh, that can help cause the environmental degradations. And so uh, what we have experienced uh, is still an enormous challenge in the food production sector. So regarding to those issues, I think it's still important uh, to maintain urban and rural linkage to build sustainable food system in order to keep producing uh, food for uh, urban demands, but also keep maintaining the environmental, uh, the environment in rural area. Okay, uh, thank you, Aninda, for your answers. I think it's also related with uh, what Long said before that system systematically way of producing uh, producing agricultural production is also important. And also, you also mentioned about the smart agriculture system, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so, just to confirm, so do you think that uh, smart agriculture system, uh, for example, in rural area, can decrease a number of migration from rural to urban? because the youth become more attracted to agricultural sector. So what do you think? Um, I believe that for now, it's still unsure, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it might help to like reducing the migration from a rural to urban mm -hmm. uh, because my, it might be when we apply the smart agriculture sector, this agriculture sector become a hype uh, to the mm -hmm. yield 
in the future. So it will become uh, one of the you know, favorite job for them. So that's why maybe they can uh, not stop thinking, but maybe they also can take into considerations uh, like uh, walking in rural area, helping the farmer. But I think it's uh, we'll be discussing more about it about the youth generation uh, role later. Okay. Okay. Thank you uh, for your confirmation. And all right. So I'm curious. Uh, what about from your point of view or experience in uh, the Philippines? Maybe uh, Brian, please. Yes. Thank you. Well, I I do agree with the points shared by Mr. Long and Ms. Aninda about having to have a systematic way of organizing and improving issues rural urban linkages as well as promoting the smart green agriculture. Well, in the case of Philippines, no, um, it is very essential for us to improve food sustainability issues in the rural and urban sector so as to achieve food security. You know, Philippines is, is hit or being visited by, by a number of typhoons and in, in an average of 20 typhoons and super typhoons here in the Philippines. And ensuring a sustainable supply of food for the world's fast growing population is, is really a major challenge. And yeah, like, like what Mam Aninda said, food reduction is one of the key areas that require action alongside issues of food consumption, nutrition, and food security. So that is when the support from the government comes in, in terms of giving free access to agriculture and farming, extending or bringing livelihood and extension projects to less fortunate communities in a region, and of course, a support to improve agricultural productivity among farmers. So it is where the, the role of the youth comes in as well. So that will be <clears throat> more explored later in that discussion. So that's I, my opinion or, or thought about this, this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Interesting points. Um, maybe I want to go back uh, to Long. Um, you mentioned about uh, uh, to, to, to make the supply chain closed uh, from rural and urban area. Um, uh, have you think about uh, how important the urban agriculture is? Uh, Dr. Long, maybe you can share your perspective on urban agriculture as well. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nofalia. Um, indeed, we are talking about the rural urban connection, um, but it's good that we don't overlook a very important part of the food production system which is uh, urban agriculture and peri-urban agriculture, especially peri-urban. Um, according to some of the statistics, I don't have it on the top of my mind, but peri-urban agriculture is actually where most of the food is produced. Um, so that is the transition area between the urban and the rural uh, areas. So areas around the cities um, that you wouldn't define as, as urban. Um, I think the, the important there is feature there of, of you know urban and peri-urban systems for food production is that they can on the one hand uh, produce green spaces and keep the city and and, and 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 create a kind of a green buffer for the urban areas at the same time produce a lot of food for the city and in that sense you know the food is produced right next to the consumers in so in talking in terms of the chain chain language um we are very close. Um, and there we, we talk about, you know, uh, circular food systems and, and there um, having the food produced as locally as possible is, is very important. And um, yeah, I think um, that's, you know, the importance of this uh, food production system is there. And, and, and my point is not to overlook that and, and try to promote it because it's also something that is attractive, um, that is um, interesting for, for young people. Um, and, and, and not necessarily, you, you don't have to be in the farm uh, in a rural area to produce food. So that kind of mindset needs to change. And, and that is possible if we look into urban and peri-urban agriculture. Okay. So we are sure that rural urban is completing each other, right? Therefore, we need to bridge the gap between rural and urban uh, yeah, for the sake of the sustainable agriculture and food system. All right, um, uh, but um, the questions um, about the 
uh, I said before uh, to Miss Aninda about um, is is a sustainable agriculture or a smart agriculture system can decrease a number of migration from rural to urban. Um, what do you think about it, uh, Long? Um, sorry again, please. I, I did not get the question. Could you okay. phrase it again? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I asked the question to Aninda before uh, about um, is the smart agriculture system, uh, if we develop smart agriculture system in rural area, for example, can decrease a number of migration uh, of the youth from rural to urban area because youth become more attracted to agriculture sector in the rural. So what do you think about it? Yes, I, I yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, I think um, in 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 principle, yes, um, and that should be the direction to go for. Um, however, looking at the, the the general tendency, so we did a, we did a survey in Bangladesh, um, and then we found out that you know in in in, in um, so that I think that that is quite connecting to our context also, although. You know, this is now Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. um, farming is increasingly becoming an attractive job for for young yeah. people, and I think very much without uh, data, uh, hard data, we can we can say it for for pretty much uh, a lot of rural areas across Southeast Asia, um, and that is a, a very difficult trend to reverse. Um, it has a lot to do with perception, but also with income level and with the you know, the harshness of, of doing agriculture. It's not that easy. I, uh, I was talking to, um, we had an opportunity to go to an organic farming farm to produce rice in Vietnam and th they attract hundreds of, of young uh, students and, 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 and enthusiasts from the city to go to Anza to produce organic rice. And so everything is very attractive. But mm -hmm. um, after half a month, when we do interviewed uh, with the manager and the, the operator of this scheme to bring people in, they say, you know, we are not trained to do farming. We are not fit to do and all these things. So um, also for the young guys that are in the rural areas, that they are not doing farming since young, they're not trained and they're not having the mindset to do farming. That's a difficult trend to reverse. However, I think, with important leads like using um, smart technologies, uh, automated agriculture, as Anita and Brian also mentioned, and climate smart agriculture. So um, being less dependent on what the nature has to bring, but then have a bit of a control of what's gonna happen in terms of you know rainfall, uh, all the temperature, um, have control in your system in terms of how much fertilizer do I need to apply. That would reduce a lot of the workload and that will give a lot of the sense of control, I think uh, then farming will become more attractive. And um, hopefully uh, it will reverse the trend of migrating from rural to urban areas. Okay. So that's still an open question. <laughs> okay, thank you. But uh, so besides the technology and also the mindset, uh, I also highlight uh, the point that the income increase also important for youth to be still involved in agriculture, right? So it will become more uh, uh, attractive sectors. Okay, so I think uh, we move to the next questions. Um, so uh, Brian uh, mentioned that you will uh, talk more or elaborate more later about the about the rural urban linkages. So maybe at, uh, first, uh, maybe so for this question is, what are the key lessons and strategies to promote the better rural urban linkages in tackling the challenges in achieving SDGs. So uh, may I start with Raya? Thank you, Nafalia. Yeah, yeah, so there are actually a lot of strategies to promote mm -hmm. a better rural urban linkage and tackling challenges in achieving SDGs. So we have 17 uh, UNDP SDGs, right? And in our case, for example, again, as uh, a while ago, I have mentioned that the Philippines is being visited or hit by typhoons and super typhoons each year. And it's really one of our major challenges here. Because when we talk about 
sustainability or achieving our SDGs, we have to include all processes and aspects involved in, in feeding a population, for example, giving emergency foods during disasters and natural calamities. So there has to be anything that can be maintained at a certain rate or level. So with this, I think one of our strategies that we are doing here in the Philippines is first to avoid the emotional and political aspects of sustainability and avoid similar descriptions of alternative food systems. We also build connections with our farmers and seed growers through agricultural trainings and seminars. So we partner with them, we get to know their statuses in both in the, in the agriculture and in the fisheries sector. So we, uh, just to share with you, we had attended a short course training and workshop on food value chain, which were participated by, by our students taking BS and food tech. So together with, yeah, with us. So that project aimed to improve the system for human resource development in the region, build out network among young generation, com uh, compose organizations for strengthening food value chain, such as an agriculture cooperative, for example, for poverty alleviation. No, so by, by benefit sharing and by developing value chains in the region, th this will help develop as well human resources for enhancing food security and harmonizing agricultural and food related regulations and standards and increase the, thereby increase opportunities for industrial development. So that activity imparted a lot of knowledge to our students since the topics discussed in the workshop are really relevant and very timely to the respective field of interest or specialization. So with this, uh, the lessons learned can also be shared to our farmers to help them improve their agricultural practices for improved agricultural production. So we take part the students and our youths in every research and extension undertaking as part of, the, of their training. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brian, for your uh, answers. Um, but I am curious about uh, the emotional and political aspects of sustainability. Maybe you can elaborate more, maybe in the context of the Philippines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's quite yeah. a challenging one. Yeah. Yes, it uh, is. It's really uh, quite challenging here in the Philippines because we live in a dem democratic country, mm -hmm. yet we, we get to have a lot of conflicts when it comes mm -hmm. to to government support, especially financial support. And we have been facing economic loss, like for example, in the, in the aspect of food production. So that's one thing that we are facing right now. We get to, 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 you know, to, to not set aside personal and political issues as long as we, 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 we get to solve the problems right away, especially in addressing uh, disaster risk and management. So, Practicing resiliency is one, is one challenging factor here in the Philippines because, again, mm -hmm. we, we get to be in conflict with other people, not to have mm -hmm. a common understanding. So one thing we are appreciative about Filipinos is we get to take action. We get to help right away with the Filipinos who are in need, like, for example, being hit by that super typhoon. So sometimes we forget to, to set aside our personal and political issues. Hmm. I see. I see. That's that's interesting because you also mentioned about harmonizing the regulation. So this is has to do with the government, right? So yeah. we need to work as well with the government and other stakeholders as well to tackle the challenge. Okay. Um. Thank you, Ryan, for your answers. Uh. And um. Aninda, please. Oh. Okay. Uh. I would like to confirm the question because it's quite. <laughs> uh. So the, the key lessons and strategies to Strategy, improve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the most important thing uh, as the key lessons to improve the urban and rural and urban linkage in agriculture sector is integrating the upstream agri agriculture activity, which is farming itself in rural and downstream activity, which is food consumption in urban. Um, I would say that um, in the past, increasing food productions and supply in the short term for urban and rural areas, um, we more concerned about food security. But however, over time, in sustainable food system, um, instead of um, emphasizing increasing 
productions uh, and maximizing research pressure. Um, I think it, it's essentially required uh, that we keep empowering farmers to become more involved in food security plans. But um, of course, uh, sure that uh, to empower farmers, we need young generations here, youth, uh, youth has an important role uh, currently uh, to empower these farmers uh, so they can be embraced to the recent technology, uh, they can be embraced to smart agricultural method, or they can apply the precision farming methods that might uh, minimize, uh, for example, water resource during consumption, uh, water resource consumption during irrigations, or nutrition fertilizer application to the corpse, and therefore it will be um, minimize the emission uh, during the farming activity while we keep maximizing the food productions. Okay, thank you. So integrating the upstream and uh, downstream and also uh, again, the, the role of youth to empower the farmers or maybe uh, empower each other between youth uh, and also the farmers. Exactly. Okay, so exactly. Okay, thank you Aninda. And uh, that's also interesting point about integrating upstream and downstream activity especially in rural and urban area. So maybe is it also apply in, in the Vietnam uh, law? Can you share? Or any yes, other I, strategy maybe? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I think it definitely applies. Um, and it's beautiful to to hear from uh, Mr. Brian and also from Ms. Uh, Aninda that we, we, we share a lot of commonality actually when we sit yeah, on the yeah. table and we talk about these these challenges and these opportunities. So I think definitely a lot has been said and a lot are applying to Vietnam. Um, I, um, if I may, then um, there's, there's one more point that I want to contribute, which is relating to the use of technology um, for, for, to, to close this linkage. I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of of, of somebody and a company who is interested in leveraging all these, you know, digital technologies uh, for food production. Um, we see that the technology, especially digital technology, and I hear I'm talking about specifically about mobile app and websites and, 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 and digital forums of farmers can break through a lot of barriers um, in farming and in connecting to people, not from rural area to the urban, but to any way of the world. Um, think about, you know, in the past, let's say 10, 10 years ago, if a farmer sitting in the north of Vietnam wants to know what is the rainfall situation that I would expect to begin with the crop that I would choose uh, in the coming rainy season, he has no clue. And there's no way he can have that information. Um, but now, you know, um, with the technology that is there, you know, um, all the social media groups, I have read and I have seen and talked to a great example from Indonesia, BKMK, that they do great forecasting and they make uh, excellent communication platforms to send out these, these uh, forecasts to the farmers and they have millions of people following on Instagram and on, on YouTube. And I think those are very exciting example and say, you know, um, farmers in rural areas can get a proper forecast and can take action upon it and can connect to the rural, uh, to the urban areas uh, in terms of market as well. Because, you know, all these platforms can also connect to the wholesalers, to the distributors. Farmers can take reference of the price, which is one of the very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, element when it comes to, to farming. Um, so I think if I... Um, want to make a point and I think focusing on the technology is a very important uh, strategy, yeah. Okay, thank you uh, again about the technology for food production also related uh, to the technical aspect and climate or environmental aspect like forecast uh, uh, forecast stuff and, and something like that. Okay, um, um, uh, I also curious about the regulation or the, or the, you know, the collaboration between uh, all stakeholders. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is the collaboration also work to, you know, to be the strategy to link it to the rural or urban area? Let's say government or CSOs or maybe the farmers or youth or companies maybe? What do you think? 
maybe uh, Long or Aninda can give a perspective. Oh, okay. Um, in Indonesia itself, <clears throat> uh, like we have mentioned before, that farming still doesn't sound a fancy activity nowadays. Mm -hmm. But um, we also believe that uh, by uh, time being, uh, there has been a growing of number of youth participating in agricultural activity. Uh, and like uh, previously mentioned by Long, they also start to building agri-tech innovations uh, in a form of application to help farmers doing so. Um, but of course, uh, to apply this technology uh, to the real uh, farming applications, they need to uh, go deeply into this farming activity. But of course, um, the government uh, is not only yet uh, roles that can help this, uh, this strategy to tackle to tackling the problem in agricultural sector, but the government itself. For example, um, the farmers itself when they they may they they get they get help uh, in technology to know the right water rainfall so they can minimize the food production. But it's not only uh, the points, it's not only a factor to increase the maximize the food production. They need, for example, uh, uh, tools to farm, for example, a tractor or something else. And we know that farmers cannot uh, avoid them uh, because nowadays uh, the, the income for farming still, uh, we can categorize as low income. So it, it's really need a help. It, it, we, it's, urgently, uh, it's urgently, the government uh, participation is urgently required to support these farmers to uh, improve the technique or the, uh, uh, to utilize the system the, when they are farming itself. So I think it's uh, like also Yas mentioned before that uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's triple helix. So and one of the three, uh, one of the component in this triple helix is government. So I think it's important it's, uh, to uh, involve the government to improve uh, the agriculture sector, particularly in Indonesia. Okay, thank you for your answer. So um, collaboration is important. Technology. Um, can be also the strategies and among of them also like um, Brian said about the building network, uh, training and knowledge sharing among the farmers, uh, increasing the human resources as well, and also the, 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 the political aspects or let's say uh, exactly. the harmonizing uh, regulations. Okay, thank you. And um, we, we heard a lot about the role of youth uh, um, about the uh, in strengthening rural urban linkages in Southeast Asia. So, uh, about the roles of youth, uh, uh, maybe you can share your perspective, uh, Brian. Yes. <clears throat> um, you know, it is our vision to create a healthy environment, to have a sustainable society, and protect our biodiversity. So, one thing our youth can take part in strengthening rural urban linkages in Southeast Asia is, I think, to use the voice of our social media for awareness. Mm -hmm. We know how effective and important communication is in establishing linkages from rural to urban sector. And I think building networks among youth will be helpful in promoting agricultural activities while preserving the resources available. Our youths can, can play a major role in establishing good customer service relationship by having to communicate using different communication and social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and all the other platforms. They can also help promote our marketing activities in addressing and achieving our SDGs. So, so yeah, that's one thing, the collaboration, the use of technology, we have to encourage them to engage in any agriculture related entrepreneurial activities so that they can also acquire knowledge and skills and thereby apply them in real life situations. So I'm also glad that they can also, uh, that your organization also have this Empower Youth for Food campaign. So by the way, happy anniversary for that campaign. So I'm really glad that you have this kind of, this project which involves the participation of our youth, our students. 
So that's one of the manifestation that our youths can, can, are really active and had already taken up space in attending to sustainability issues and needs of our agriculture and of the earth as a whole. So their, their major role here, I think, is to take part in information dissemination uh, by collaboration and the use of technology. So I think that's one thing they can, they can really take a part in strengthening our uh, rural urban linkages. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Brian. So the use of the the use the voice uh, of social media, like the campaign, yes. uh, empower yeah. youth for food, also important to spread the the values of agricultural sectors and stuff, and also building networking. Uh, but uh, what do you think? Is it uh, the collaboration between uh, youth in rural and youth in urban area should be also you know maintained and increase? What do you think about it? Yeah, I think uh, it, it depends on the situation. Like we, uh, we, we can collaborate, like our youths here in the Philippines can collaborate with those of the Indonesia because maybe, or in Vietnam, because maybe their practices there in agriculture are better than ours or our practices are better than yours. So we can have a collaboration technique so, so as to maintain or maybe increase the migration of our yeah linkages from from rural to urban sectors. So I think that's one thing they can they can yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So emphasizing the collaboration using social media and another innovative uh, mechanism. Okay, uh, okay, maybe I want to go to Aninda. Do you have perspective on this on the role of youth? You mentioned a lot about youth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because, okay. uh, since I have been uh, a lecturer in agriculture okay. uh, faculty, so I have been exposure with the young, gen young generations that can be uh, that might be a future uh, mm -hmm. smart farmer. We can say. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to highlight uh, for the roles of Brio actually for strengthening mm -hmm. uh, rural and urban linkage in Southeast Asia, in particular, um, it's. Uh, they can be, they can have a big role uh, in knowledge transfer. So we know that uh, nowadays the education is most likely happening in uh, urban area. So uh, I think youth, uh, particularly in urban area, can play a role uh, in abridging the basic science that they has acquired uh, to the application on the ground. Not only to farmer, but also like you mentioned, also youth in rural area. So they can be also exposure with uh, current and recent technologies that might can help improve the farming activity. And also it can help to adapt the good agricultural practice. So we know that, for example, in developing uh, country in uh, in developed country like uh, Netherlands, uh, they have they already have applied the precision farming, and uh, I think uh, by playing a role as a knowledge transfer, uh, this can also be applied in uh, developed con developing country like Indonesia, so they can grow and produce food efficiently while also accomplish climate smart agriculture. Um, uh, like uh, long mentioned before, that uh, this uh, recent, uh, recently some a lot of uh, agritech innovation has started growing in the form of application. But we know that this application cannot be de well de delivered to the farmers or people in rural area uh, if they can if they de if they don't. Uh, uh, approach the farmer in the rural area if they don't. Uh, Approach them by adapting their local wisdom, so they can help assisting the farmers and people in rural area to apply this climate smart agriculture. So I think hence it, it will improve uh, this. Uh, the role of the youth can be uh, they can be a play a role a big role in bridging the basic science as a knowledge transfer that uh, from urban to rural area. Okay. Thank you. That's interesting point about the knowledge transfer between uh, rural and urban, or maybe uh, among Southeast Asian countries. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, and Long, how about uh, your perspective? Yes, I think a lot has been shared and a lot of good points has been shared by uh, our two other panelists. And I recall also um, the Mentimeter, the survey that we just did mm -hmm. also, uh, there are important things to mention. 
Um, so I just be very brief on, on two things. One is, um, I think, as somebody said, in the mental matter, be the farmers, you know, uh, ourselves. Because labor-wise, uh, the farming sector is still a very labor-intensive sector comparing to the rest. We need people to work there, and we, we preferably uh, have the situation that not only the, the parents and the grandparents are working on the field, we need the young guys there. And so I think, you know, one of the messages to the youth is be a farmer yourself. That's the best. Um, and I think the message to it is that it can be very rewarding uh, emotionally, uh, also financial. And how to make sure uh, that happens, I think uh, Mr. Brian already have excellent uh, recommendations for that. The, the second thing is uh, the role of youth is to, to, to you know, to pick up the innovations. We are sending out, uh, we are developing at university at companies, um, uh, tons of innovation every day uh, these days and how that will be picked up in the rural areas very much depend on, on who pick it up. Is it our grandpas who would, you know, use the app or preferably uh, a, a, young, a young student that moved back or someone who are, you know, uh, young and are more open to new technology. So I think um, the role of the youth to to use and to leverage innovations and technology uh, for farming is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I completely agree uh, about the bee farmers <laughs> because we need the youth to stay and run the run the more sustainable agricultural system. That's that's very very um, interesting point. Thank you, uh, Dr. Long. And your answers, all of your answers are very clear. Thank you so much for this discussion, uh, for the first session of the discussion, uh, because uh, we, we want to continue with the questions from the participants. But before that, uh, we are arriving at the winner announcement for the, for the video competition of Empower Youth for Food. So this is also good to lighten up the mood here and to refresh and relax first from the interesting discussion session. And um, okay, it's time for me to give the floor for Nanya Burki, Head of Development and Partnership, Nuvik Neso Indonesia, and Ika Satyasari from the Tara Foundation, OKP Scholarship Awardee from Van Hal, Van Hal Lerenstein University of Applied Sciences to announce the winners. So Nanya and Ika, please. Yeah. Okay, hello. Yeah, first of all, uh, Honestly, it is not easy for us as juries uh, to assess the videos coming from uh, different countries. And the organizers uh, actually has, uh, already accepted uh, 71 videos uh, from uh, Malaysia, Bangladesh, and the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And out of uh, 71 videos, and there were 54 eligible uh, to assess uh, to for jury assessment. Yeah, we saw that um, the videos are great, All right, Danya? And then uh, we saw that uh, everybody tried to deliver a good message on a uh, sustainable food system on their, uh, in their own way. So uh, everything is very good. And then, however, we have to choose uh, only eight in total uh, for the winners. Five uh, are for social media favorite winners category, and then three uh, winners for the best videos that uh, covers uh, different aspects of uh, sustainable uh, food uh, system. Well, uh, and then uh, I would like to mention uh, who are the juries for the video competition this year. First, uh, we have uh, Nanya, Nanya Burki. Uh, she is from Nufik Neso and also uh, the project coordinator for uh, Empower Youth for Food. And then we have uh, Dr. Nurmi Pangesti uh, from Rotasi Institute. Uh, she, she is also an FP alumni Wakhanikan University. And then the third one uh, from Vietnam, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nguyen Viet Long from um, Vietnam National University of Agriculture, and me, myself, Ika Satyasari from Detara Foundation. 
I was um, the OKP scholarship uh, from uh, Van Hollerenstein University of uh, Applied Science. Well, uh, Nanya, uh, uh, how are the criteria uh, for us to assess the videos? Yeah, maybe you can uh, you can so to uh, our participants and our our audience. Yeah, thank you. Ica. Well, the great thing is that all participants who submitted the video, they contributed actually in shaping a future of agriculture by inspiring the youth in Southeast Asia and Bangladesh. Um, so that's great. And um, last month we had a hard time as jury to assess all the uh, proposed or all the uh, videos. And we needed to select three best videos and seven till 10 videos, which yeah, uh, could be published on the Instagram so that you could also vote for your favorite winner. Um, and thanks for doing that. So uh, before we dive to the winners of the competition, uh, we would like to explain uh, what we uh, we're looking for. So we assessed on several criteria. We looked at the content of the video, the quality, uh, but also how original or creative have you been and uh, the quality of the video itself. Okay, I think uh, we cannot wait any longer, Ika. So yes. <laughs> time to now start to announce the five winners of the social media category. Congratulations, Akbar, Janaika, Devi, Fania, and Olivia. Um, you are the winners of the social media category, and uh, 100 euro will come to you soon. Uh, please uh, be prepared because after the announcement of the three best winners, we will ask you to open your camera so that we can take a photo together. Again, congratulations. Now, a drum roll, please, because we would like to announce the three best winners. Um, so, actually, I would like to give a description first before we show the videos of the three best winners. The third winner is from Vietnam. It's a very funny video about what happens to your body if you don't eat healthy food and do lack of exercise, especially when people stay much at home during the COVID pandemic. Um, this winning video gives practical tips for youth uh, on a healthy diet. Let's watch the video. Enemy spotted. <laughs> Có muốn đi bộ ở công viên không? À, gì đây? Đợi tí đến nốt cái game đã rồi nó chơi hết đi. Đây, còn thấy uh, chơi game thôi. Cậu thử nhìn lại bản thân ừ. xem. Ý cậu gì cậu có béo lắm đâu? Dừng lại game đi. Đứng, đứng lên tôi xem nào. Oh my god. Wow. Trời ơi, thế này là không được rồi. Ý cậu sao tôi có bụng sáu muối này? Thấy chưa? Lăn ra đây, tớ cho cậu xem cái này ừ, Ok, thế cậu đi cho tớ xem cái gì đây? Đây là cơ thể của cậu Do Covid-19, nhiều người ở, ở nhà và ăn đồ ăn và có đường và có chất béo Nếu cứ tiếp tục thế này thì mỡ dần dần <cười> tích tụ lại và cậu sẽ bị béo béo phì da của bạn sẽ xấu đi sức khỏe tinh thần của bạn có thể giảm giảm sút mức cholesterol của bạn có thể tăng vọt bạn có thể tăng nguy cơ ung thư và để ngăn chặn điều này tớ đã làm cho cậu một thực đơn bao gồm rau củ súp như súp lơ bắp cải các loại củ như cà rốt khoai tây khoai lang hoặc các loại hạt như hạt ốc chó, hạt hạnh nhân, hạt mắc ca Về mặt đồ uống, cậu có thể uống sữa hạt hoặc sữa đậu nành Thế tại sao cậu lại tạo cho tớ một cái thực đơn như thế này? Bởi vì tớ muốn cậu cung cấp các loại dinh dưỡng và phương pháp nhằm tránh làm cạn kiệt tài nguyên, môi trường và đồng thời cải thiện sức khỏe của chúng ta và tránh sự đợt tấn công của bệnh tật như Covid-19 
So congratulations to Fa Dui Ling. You will be awarded with 200 euros. Now we would like to announce the second best prize winner. Um, a video about how millennials can make a difference in shaping the future of agriculture with smart farming. New technologies and the development of digitalization are very well explained in this video. Let's take a look. Generasi milenial adalah pelaku pertanian yang terlibat aktif dalam mewujudkan pertanian modern sebagai bagian dari proses perubahan karifan lokal menjadi pertanian digital. Smart farming merupakan upaya pengembangan digital untuk menghasilkan produk yang unggul, tepat, efisien, dan berkelanjutan. Smart farming adalah konsep pertanian yang memanfaatkan otomatisasi teknologi didukung oleh manajemen big data, kecerdasan buatan, dan internet of things atau IoT. Smart farming dilakukan demi meningkatkan kualitas maupun kuantitas produk pertanian dalam rangka mengoptimalkan sumber daya lahan, teknologi budidaya, sumber daya manusia, dan sumber daya produktif lainnya. Implementasi smart farming mendorong generasi milenial berperan aktif dalam membangun sektor pertanian. Dengan teknologi digenggaman, menjadikan metode pertanian yang mudah, teknologi yang ramah, dan pertanian yang inovatif. Melalui pertanian, generasi muda membangun dunia. Looks professional, huh? So, congratulations to Hadiana Pradipta Nuha from Indonesia. You have won 300 euros. Okay, now we go to the first prize winner, which is also from Indonesia. Within less than two minutes, you will learn a lot about the impact of food loss and waste by watching this video. By showing a good community practice, it becomes clear how each of us can contribute to a sustainable food system by turning organic waste into compost. This video gives us a great insight into community good practice of communal composting in the urban area. Let's take a look at this video. Pada tahun 2018, sebanyak 184 kg per kapita per tahun pangan terbuang secara percuma. Kehilangan terjadi di tiap tahap, mulai dari produksi, pasca panen dan penyimpanan, pemrosesan dan pengemasan, distribusi dan pemasaran, hingga konsumsi. Kehilangan terbanyak terjadi pada tahap konsumsi yang mencapai hampir 40%. Sementara, jenis pangan yang paling tidak efisien adalah sayur-sayuran yang kehilangannya mencapai 62,8% dari seluruh suplai domestik Indonesia. Sampah, sisa konsumsi makanan, tidak hanya mubazir, tapi juga menambah beban tempat pembuangan akhir sampah yang kondisinya kian memprihatinkan. Membuat kompos secara komunal bisa jadi solusi untuk masalah ini, seperti yang sedang dirintis di lingkungan tempat tinggalku di Jakarta Timur. Cara ini terbukti bisa menarik lebih banyak rumah tangga untuk memilah sampah dapurnya dan membuka lapangan pekerjaan baru bagi anak muda di sekitar. Kompos yang dihasilkan membantu meningkatkan kesuburan tanah bagi kebun-kebun di halaman rumah dan lahan-lahan kosong di perkotaan. Sumber sayur-sayuran alami yang lebih dekat dengan konsumen tentunya akan mengurangi kehilangan pangan dan memperkuat upaya menuju sistem pangan yang berkelanjutan. Oh, 
Congratulations to Mikael A. Kaisan Lexmana from Indonesia. You have won the first prize of 500 euro with this video. Well, um, may I ask all the winners to open their cameras so that we can take a nice picture together. Yeah, we have uh, Akbar Fernando Dapung already. Your favorite winners, who else? <laughs> Yeah, we have Olivia, Fania, Hatyanta, any else? That's all, okay. Okay. Okay, um, I think there are four uh, participants um, joining us today. Unfortunately, uh, others uh, couldn't join. Okay, uh, once again, con congratulations. I will count um, to take uh, the camera uh, and the um, uh, operator will uh, take the picture all of us together. Okay, uh, ready? The cameraman, I will count. One, two, three. Yeah. Uh, once more, give your best smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, overall, uh, we really appreciate all, to all the participants of the videos campaign competition this year. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing the idea towards sustainable food systems. We do hope that you never stop in campaigning good things to the societies in our own countries and often the world. Combine your knowledge, good practice, and creativity. So as you uh, please show what you can uh, to make a change. Well, Nanya, I think uh, it is enough from us. Uh, we can uh, give uh, the stake to the um, moderator. Do you have any addition, yeah, Nanya? Thank you, Ika. Okay, uh, the time uh, I will give to you back, Mbak um, Nova. Okay, thank you, uh, Nanya and Ika. Thank you for, for the juries during the, the challenge program and congratulations for the winners. I think this is an evidence that youth really play the role, especially in promoting new way of agriculture and food sector to be more sustainable, innovative, and resilient. Uh, thank you all and congrats again uh, for the winners. Okay, um, you know, like uh, I'm looking at the chat box. It's really interesting to see you guys uh, greetings each other. There is from Bangladesh and also I believe there are a lot of uh, you from another, from other Southeast Asian countries. Thank you so much. And Long also shared the link about the, about the technology, I think. Right, so you can you can also click the link uh, from Long. Maybe it will give you another perspective uh, what is happening in, in 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 the Philippines, in the Vietnam. Sorry, right? <laughs> sorry, I mix up. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, and the participants also congratulating the winners. Thank you so much. Okay, I think it's enough for the announcement uh, of the winners. Uh, okay, so let's continue. I hope you you still up for this because we will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Um, and there are six questions of oh, five questions. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we will address them one by one. Maybe the first one um, from Shadi Mahmud Anik. Um, uh, okay, I invite again for uh, I invited um, all panelists. You can open your camera. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so the first question is uh, specific to long. 
uh, long, maybe you can also uh, read the questions to be more clear. So how can we minimize using fresh water as it is reducing day by day in order to have sustainable agro, agro production? Maybe it's related with your expertise, I think. <laughs> okay, please, long. Yes. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for the question. And first of all, also uh, congratulations to all the uh, winners at Price Excellent uh, Communication Products. About the question, indeed, that's a, oh, that's a huge question um, um, and difficult to, to address. Uh, but I, th I think a couple of points to share. So it is, the question is about um, how can we minimize the use of fresh water in the context of uh, crop production uh, and, and give, given the challenge that, you know, our fresh water resource is reducing day by day uh, in some areas very drastically. Um, yes, um, there are a lot that can be done. But I think one of the things that I find very interesting is that to learn from um, the other parts of the world where things are a bit more difficult to do farming. For example, in the Sahel, in the Horn of Africa, in Ethiopia, Sudan, those countries, because people have a lot of experience working with much less water. Um, of course, the productivity is not comparable, but what I find very interesting, for example, is you know, when we look in our part of the world, when we look at water availability and fresh water, we mostly look at, you know, river flow and rainwater. And actually the soil can hold a lot of water. There's a lot of moisture in the soil. And there in, in I have seen in Sudan, in Ethiopia, spade irrigation system, which is basically try to store as much as possible the moisture in the soil and make the best use of that storage over time. In, in that sense, you are very efficient. Uh, you need very little crop, uh, drop the crop. Um, so one of the thing is, you know, to look in the uh, ways to um, produce crop with less water and, and look beyond the use of, you know, rainwater, groundwater, uh, river water, but to try to store moisture there. The other, the other possibility is just to switch to another less water demanding uh, uh, crop. I recall the example, one of the onions put a very interesting question, and it's the same in Vietnam, the red onion farming along the coast, I suppose. That is very, uh, um, you know, water consumption, in terms of water consumption, that's very intense. You constantly need to supply fresh water for the red onion. And by simply switching to other crops, um, that we have seen examples in, along the coastal lines of Vietnam, um, all of a sudden, you can forget about the, the, the huge water consumption. Um, of course, having said that, it's not that easy. And I think it's very dependent on the context, uh, what we can do. Uh, yeah. So I just give some examples. Okay, thank you uh, for the answers. Um, so it's depend on the context, on the, on the region, maybe, for example. And maybe... Uh, uh, as you mentioned that there are a lot of example, uh, for example, in, in Africa or maybe in, in Southeast Asia countries, maybe if you have another or details uh, about that information, maybe you can share the link uh, long uh, in the chat box so everyone can, you know, like following up uh, uh, your example. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's move to another, to the next question. Um, Okay, I think it's apply for for all of the for of the panelists. Um, oh, how to change the mindset of traditional farmers to adopt the new method or innovation method? For example, the red shallot farmers in Indonesia, where they are still keen on using the old method uh, due to its different quality. Since uh, this attendee gave the example in Indonesia, maybe Aninda, you can go first. Um, okay, thank you, Ms. Nohalia. Um, regarding to changing the mindset, it's, uh, I think that's one of the most uh, difficult challenge uh, to, in, uh, to shifting the traditional farmers to into smart agriculture system. However, um, I do believe that um, to change the mindset, like, 
long mentioned in the our talk session before that be a farmer itself. So uh, in order to do that, we need to prove them. I think one of the way is doing the mow plot. So we can say that nowadays there, there has been uh, some agri-tech innovation that can help us uh, to improve uh, the method for growing, for example, here, for instance, shallot. So uh, let's say that this application can help us to uh, know the water, the soil, the water content in the soil and the nutrient content in the soil. So, uh, but because this, they don't want to shifting to the uh, this uh, using, uh, they, want to, they don't want to move for using this application. They still using some excess, uh, ex exceeding of uh, water resource or even the fertilizer application. So I think it's it is more important for the yield uh, if they want to change the mindset of this traditional farmers that uh, they adapt the local wisdom so they can uh, they know how to well transfer well deliver the new technology to the farmers and also doing the mopot because doing the mopot it's kind of uh, real proven uh, to uh, and also kind of approval act to the farmers that all the things all the theory that they have been uh, uh, transferring to them has been proven that it is applicable i think that's uh, one of the key roles to change the mindset Okay, thank you. So uh, I also highlight that the importance of the combination uh, modern technology with local wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So because it, it also related with the context and all. And uh, maybe uh, Brian, would you add some more insights on this about the, you know, like uh, how to change the mindset of traditional farmers to adopt a new method or innovative method, please. Yes, yeah, so um, the demand for fresh seafood is increasing worldwide, you know, shifting from, 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 uh, from quantity to quality. So I think uh, they have to be motivated, the farmers have to be motivated by achieving quality food production or quality food products. So that would make them uh, be eager to produce uh, high quality raw materials in order for, for the food processors to create and produce food quality products. Because, you know, uh, a quality products comes with, uh, with a higher price and that they will be uh, having or achieving higher income as well for the farmers. So that will make their mindset to positivity by achieving quality uh, food products. Okay, so uh, I think it is also related with you have mentioned before about knowledge transfer trainings yeah. to produce good yield. So the, the income will increase and it will, mm -hmm. you know, like beneficial for, for the farmers as well. Yes, so, so capacitating them. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Brian. Uh, um, so for along, maybe you can add more points for emphasizing something. Yeah. No, 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 no further uh, comment on this. I think a lot of, uh, have been said. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next question um, from Mohammed Al Jabbar here in the uh, Q and A box. What are the best way to convince the stereotype of working as farmer, especially among the young generation? Greetings from Malaysia. Greetings. Uh, hello, Mohammed Al Jabbar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay. So about these questions, maybe. This is also related to what we have been uh, discussing before, but maybe you can emphasize more on the details or maybe uh, add new points on this. Uh, maybe uh, farmers, young farmers, maybe feel less confidence to be a farmer, I believe, right? So, yeah, maybe I can start with um, Aninda first, please. Uh, uh, so, the question was the best way to convince stereotype of working as farmers especially among their generations. Um, I think, to my opinion, the best way to convince the stereotype of working as a farmers, like long said, be farmers, <laughs> show them that uh, farmers uh, doesn't, nowadays, currently, uh, farmers can be uh, something that also could sounds cool let's say that uh, for the old generations so um i think uh 
to change the stereotype or to convince the stereotype, of course, it takes a long time. You cannot just change the stereotype in this very short term period. But uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to be the, the role itself, be the farmers, and then also be uh, innovative, be uh, where we are where we are being a farmers, uh, create some innovations, innovate uh, things, because well, let's say that we are your generation. We know the basic knowledge to, from the university or from the internet, let's say, or etc. But uh, all those things can be different when we are applying them practically. So we need to be the farmer itself. And uh, by combining the farm, the traditional farmer, and all the modern knowledge that we have uh, acquired in the uh, uh, formal educations, we can uh, help this uh, farmer's uh, stereotype to be uh, a favorite job, let's say, in the future. Let's say. So I think it's uh, to convince the stereotype itself that to change your mindset first, and then uh, so you can embrace the other yet generations uh, to follow your step. Okay, thank you, Aninda. So take the role, <laughs> give contribution, give contribution to the sector. Can start simply with what you have, what you can, and exactly. what you know, and it is indirectly will change the stereotype later. Okay, thank you. And uh, next, move to Brian, please. Yeah, I totally agree with Ms. Aninda. So in my, in my perspective, I think that uh, the best way to convince a stereotype of working as a farmer is that when, 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 when youth or students, our young generation, will get to know the benefits, the things that they can get from working as a farmer. So like, for example, what are the health benefits in producing organic uh, food products? Or organic produce in agriculture so knowledge that they can get because uh, every every people in the world is is getting more health conscious every day especially because a lot are having preservatives additives that are very you know uh, uh, taking risk or giving health risks to our body so I think uh, that's one thing we should uh, uh, encourage our youth or our young generation to, to really take into consideration by knowing the, the, the perspective of being a farmer, what, what are the hard work, the best experiences that they can get from working as a farmer. So I think that's, that's, that, that's the best way to let them experience, to let them engage in farming and agriculture so that they will know how, how it feels to, to being a farmer. Thank you, interesting point that we have uh, to keep up with the trends. So we, we know with what happened yes. in the world, like organic agriculture or maybe another technology in agricultural sector. Thank yeah. you, Brian. Uh, and uh, Long, please. Yes, um, I think this is a very interesting question. And I would like to give two examples um, how to change the mindset. One is, um, well, personally, I am interested in the new models of farming and, and new ways that rural farming can be changed. And I watch a lot of... Um, uh, YouTube video short ones, uh, vlogs uh, from China. And I think China is doing an excellent, um, giving excellent example on how, um, you know, rural farming can be different uh, in terms of communication, but also in terms of doing that. And there are, I don't know, no less than 10 very, very popular uh, vloggers on YouTube uh, filming their farming activities, showing, you know, all the producers from the regions and they are making good money out of it. Um, China also have a very a good policy to support um, young people moving back into the urban, uh, from urban into the rural areas. They have financial schemes to support that. And I think that's, that's great to change the mindset uh, very concretely. The other example is we are working with what is called the Young Farmer Network of Southeast Asia, um, which is an uh, organization based in Cantor in Vietnam. In, during the pre-COVID time, people organize summer schools and get together events. So uh, young farmers, mostly organic young farmers from Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, um, I, I believe from other countries would gather in Vietnam for about a month, doing all the trainings and see you know, what kind of farming technique, especially for organic farming, can be spread around in the region. And we are now working together towards a virtual platform of farmers, just so that you know, without 
having to travel, we are still connected with each other and can still learn from each other in terms of family. I think that's those are the um, promising actions that we can take to together change the mindset and attract people into farming. Okay, thank you. So promoting agriculture in different innovative ways. And I also highlight, uh, you mentioned about the financing scheme because it is uh, a challenge, right? Uh, for I think for the farmers all over the world. And so I think we, we should uh, finding a financing, financing scheme that is fair for farmers. Uh, okay, thank you long and thank you as well for the links that you have share, shared in the in the chat box so everyone can following up uh, with the link. Thank you. Uh, move on to next questions. I think we still have um, two questions, but uh, we see with the time. Okay, uh, there is a question. Uh, I am a food technology graduate and plan to continue my master degree. According to you, what is what research is needed now for my research plans in my master degree? Any suggestions for major and research? Uh, looking for inspirations, maybe you can give some ideas. Okay, um, uh, I can start with Naninda. Since I am upcoming a, research. <laughs> well, firstly, since I am an alumni of Wagan University, and if we talk about food technologies, so uh, it is highly recommended to go to Wagan, Wagan University as uh, it is for uh, one of the best food uh, technologies uh, in the world. And for the research itself, um, based on my experience when I took master degree, of course, when we applied for master degree, we have some uh, future plans about the research, but it's it is not necessarily had to be done like that because by the time when we took the class, when we took the class, and then we start to embrace uh, some experience from our lecturers, also uh, we are exposure to the some research that ha they are that have been recently doing in our university. We can change our mind. So I think, um, yeah, become food technologist is um, highly recommended currently also according, according to our uh, topic today. I think for a research itself, it depends on what you're passionate and then what you're passionate. And if you want to change the future, what you're passionate, you can link it, uh, itself to what uh, current situation that might uh, be helped, that might be supported by your research. So I can, I think from my opinion, I cannot define uh, precisely what research, but for sure, uh, I would say that you might, uh, well, like say currently, people try to uh, uh, convert the, let's say the bio, the, the byproduct of the food into the useful food. So I think that's also kind of, uh, interesting research in, uh, in terms of food technologies and also environmental technologies as my think. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, maybe Brian? Yeah, so I'm glad that this anonymous attendee is planning to continue his or her master's degree. So knowing that I am also a graduate of this specialization, so I'm glad to hear that from you. Well, to answer your question is, um, it's actually based on your topic of interest. Now, when you apply a scholarship, for example, in a university, uh, the panel will be will be will have to know your topic of interest as as if it is the proposal or the research that you identified is in line with, uh, for example, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, like the 17 SDGs. So, if your research is more on addressing zero hunger, that could be that could be a great. Uh, a paper, a great topic of interest. But here in the Philippines, we are actually encouraged to produce emergency foods, most especially because we are being hit by super typhoons each year. So we are encouraged to go into emergency foods, especially for babies and for adults, for the senior citizens. And yeah, I think that there are a lot of topics uh, or areas that you that you can actually go into or go over and then 
you just have to 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 inline this with your passion as as mentioned by Ms. Aninda. So any topics of interest related to addressing food sustainability issues, that could be a great, great paper. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, Long, please. Yeah, I'm not really from this domain. So I think uh, I would I would restrain from from giving recommendations there. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, and the last questions. This is about the how uh, from Muhammad Asanu Kabir. How can we change the attitude of our kids to eat more vegetables and fruits instead of junk food? It will be helpful to reduce food loss. So, which of you has had experience with children? Maybe we can share. Or anyone, maybe Anina or Brian or Long. Uh, as a father, I say I give up. <laughs> <laughs> My kids don't, you know, are very picky about vegetables. vegetables. Yes, uh, but I have a uh, nephew and niece in my at my uh -huh. So what I have been experienced with them actually, uh, while well, uh, convincing them to eat vegetables, of course, I mean. We cannot expect kids can uh, easily like vegetables, all the vegetables that we have inter been introduced to them because even some uh, adult also doesn't like it. Uh, it's really hard to embrace the adult. So we expect it's, it, it will be harder for the kids. But the most important thing, I think, uh, how you uh, process the food process the vegetable so it can be interested to them uh, not only by the taste but also the appearance yeah because uh, even the taste is so good but sometimes people they embrace the food by its virtual the virtual uh, so the the appearance of the food firstly uh, what appeal them to try the food so i think that's kind of crazy answer for me because Honestly, like long said, well, even Long, who has been uh, dealing with kids, <laughs> uh, he's not sure with that. So I think what I, from my perspective, that can be that what what I can suggest. Okay, thank you, Brian. Maybe you you want to add or or agree with Aninda. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the both of them, but not okay. because I am not yet a parent. Uh, maybe as a an ankle, I, I would I would advise my nephews and nieces to eat uh, vegetables and fruits because uh, I will ask them what, what are the benefits, what are the nutrients that they can get if they wanted to have a glow, beautiful skin, for example, a white teeth. So they have to be reminded of the nutrients that they can get from consuming fruits and vegetables rather than those, uh, 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 what's this, harmful, elements that they can get from, from, from eating junk food. So they have to be reminded of the nutrients so that if they wanted to achieve a healthy body when they grow old, so they have to consume fruits and vegetables over the junk foods. So I think that would be my advice to them. Thank you, because uh, thank you for reminding me as well <laughs> about the importance of Maybe like eating vegetables. To, be, to, to convince the farmers, we need to be farmers. So to convince the kids, we need to be kids. <laughs> Exactly right. Okay, thank you. That's interesting uh, answers for these questions. Okay, um, it looks like we have covered our all of our questions here. A moment. Okay, uh, let me see first. Yeah, yeah, I think we have covered all of our questions. Okay, so Q&A session is up. Then we have to uh, wrap up this panel discussions. Uh, we have like five minutes left. Uh, I would like to invite panelists once again last time, briefly, to give your closing remarks. Uh, so maybe I can start with uh, Brian, maybe, please. Yeah, uh, a closing remark, something like, um, yeah, so I think I I'm very glad with this opportunity to have, you know, to have been at a talk or yeah, a series of talk with you guys from Indonesia and Vietnam. And it's it's good that we should be able to, to have been collaborated or share ideas. We have to encourage our youth to engage in farming and agriculture because again, we should uh, make them feel how, how it feels to become a farmer so that they will know when or how to act appropriately and when to, 
to, to judge the farmers like that. So I think uh, I, I'm, very, I'm just very glad to be part of the panelists in this event. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Long, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, my closing remark is I would like to um, thank you all for the great wisdom for sharing and uh, for participating. And um, I would like to connect to the uh, Youth for Food uh, platform and uh, initiative. I think that's a great platform. Um, and I think such a thematic oriented um, platform to connect youth of different countries would be very uh, rewarding. So uh, I would really like to um, participate myself, but also hope that a lot of our friends and colleagues would also join there and look forward to, you know, join this very uh, meaningful uh, platform. Okay, thank you, Long. Uh, and next, Anida, please. Okay, uh, I think Seth the best for the last. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, it's really good uh, opportunity for me to be invited in this station, also to have a wonderful sharing session with uh, all the participants, all especially for the panelists, the other panelists. But um, I would like to uh, and call, well, send a, a message to your uh, gener to your uh, young generations that. Um, if you want to save the future, firstly, you need to save the food. <laughs> so uh, in order to save the food, you need to save the agriculture sector and environment itself. So uh, be aware of your surrounding, be aware of your environment, and uh, of course, uh, be adapting with uh, all the current issue that we are facing, particularly in food sustainable food system. Uh, and then do not uh, be afraid to innovate, to embrace the new challenge, particularly in agricultural sector. Right, thank you so much, uh, Aninda, Long, and Brian. Thank you very much, all panelists, for, for this fruitful discussion today. And I look forward to have more discussion and collaboration in the future. You know, I, I couldn't recap the whole thing since there are a lot of insights, inspiration, and perspective uh, from panelists and also triggering questions from the participants. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but we hope that, as also the panelists mentioned, that uh, we hope that we, we, we get the idea of your roles in, the, in, in strengthening the linkages between rural and urban agriculture in Southeast Asia and this sort of talk show is able to increase awareness and promote critical dialogue and also action around food systems issues and SDGs in Southeast Asia region. Right, okay. Um, just before I close, I'm inviting you uh, participants to do a quick survey. Please, please, please uh, click the link that we share in the chat box. Uh, there is a link here, right? Uh, the host or admin, please share the link uh, of our survey. It's it's kind of feedback. We need your feedback, of course, so we can prepare better events in the future. Okay. So we'll see. Okay, so Mastito already share the, the link. www.empoweryouthforfood.com Okay. Thank you so much. There is nice gestures uh, from all of you participants in the chat box thank you so much for joining this uh, talk show okay all right i think it's enough for today great uh, thank you very much for our speakers our panelists participants sponsors and for everyone we appreciate you being here it was a pleasure being with you today thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time. Okay, and I'm signing off. Goodbye and great weekend. Thank you very much.